Hey everyone, I'm Justin Grant from RendersPath.com and today I'm going to show you an example of car rendering inside Final Render 4 GPU Hybrid Render Engine. I was able to get my hands on the beta program and I was able to work alongside CBES as trying to figure out cool ways that I could actually show off some of the uh, car renders that, I was able, that I'm able to pull off with uh, other GPU or render engines themselves like V-Ray or Corona and we also work with uh, Redshift as well but I got my hands on uh, Final Render 4 and it is just amazing it's fast we got uh, it's it's very um, intuitive and uh, it works very nice what I'm going to show you here is a uh, 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 somewhat of a, a it's, it's not really a complex scene it's pretty much a, a quick studio setup but it's enough that to show you that you get some shadows and you get some lighting it in uh, in the scene and that the this render engine can handle it quite well and also the more GPUs that you have in your system obviously the faster it's going to be um, but the cool thing about this is that um, this render engine is that we get a uh, a hybrid so we can actually just come into the GPU settings down here and as you can see right now I have only have the uh, 1080 tie at the moment uh, I, my, I lost my 690 I um, was having some uh, hardware issues actually with it so I'm gonna try to see if I can get that back up and running or if that it's it's uh, no good card <laughs> but in the meantime um, as we come down to our uh, CPU device here uh, you can see that right now I'm using this uh, the CPU and also using the, the ombre as a uh, an addition so uh, we're going to just go through this really quick here and I'm going to just show you kind of uh, some examples so right now uh, I'm using the active shade mode but I'm using it on top right so what we're going to do is come up to our uh, drop down menu and we're going to come to our extended viewports and as we come down you're going to see there's the active shades so we're going to click on that and right now we're going to let this run and we should not probably see anything in the scene. Well, that's because I have a, uh, a fabric uh, or a light, uh, pretty much a light box that sits on the top that I use from uh, my Car Studio kit. Um, and we're gonna unhide that first. So I have that all kind of plugged in. So I'm just gonna come in and find that piece here. And I believe, let's see, it should be in the groups actually, but. You should just be able to see it here. So if you come down, it's called Scully. So it's going to be the Yannis's. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I did the wrong thing here. I'm going to go hide and hide by name. I was just going through the list. Here it is, Sky uh, Skylight Fabric. So we're going to unhide. Okay, so right now we have just a, a, a light box that sits on the top. And pretty much we can get some great results just from this alone uh, without going into too much advanced lighting setups. So what I'll do here is select the light and let this load up. Oops. And as you can see here, we have our final render uh, area light. And I'm just going to check this guy on. And we're going to already see we are getting some results here on the top right. Uh, everything is set quite uh, high setting already. I pretty much just have, if I go back to my render setup, okay, hopefully this all is put up here. Okay, so let's go to the render setup here. As you can see, um, I have 300 passes set up. So we're just gonna we can we can dial this down just as we're working with lights. We don't need this to this image here to get too crisp at this moment. But we just want to, you know, if I if I bring this down 150 passes, then that way it's just gonna shorten it a bit. So it's not the GPU and the CPU is not constantly running as I'm trying to adjust lighting. Um, and we just get enough. We get some noise here, but that's okay. We're, this is not a final image, so uh, we'll be able to tackle that later on. So as you can see here, I can move my lights around and you can see that we're getting results quite fast. And I am amazed with just how responsive uh, Final Render has came uh, since the time that I've actually started working with uh, the earlier versions. Uh, everything has been really, really uh, well uh, put together now. Um, so as you can see here, by just moving the lights around, um, we're getting different looks, right, uh, for our image. And we can just let it go, I'll let it go to its 150 passes, but it's enough to, sh to show you that, wow, 
you know, um, I'm liking where this lighting position is, and uh, and then adjusting the seam lighting and materials. This should be very uh, responsive to you. Okay, so as we come over here, uh, we got the intensity. We can change all that. Well, obviously, we can say we want to we want it to get a higher intensity to it, so more light added. Um, then we're back to one. We can come into the Kelvin. We can change the color the color of uh, the warmth, or if we want to get a cooler image for the light, we can change the Kelvin of the light very easily. And we can also change like our uh, the length. And just like you have uh, lights in in other uh, render engines, uh, they have all that that same kind of properties here as well. You can also have it visible in the uh, in the view, right? So if I hit uh, if I rotate this in light, we should be able to see it. Okay. Same thing here, I, so same thing as, as any render engine you would get, you know, showing it in the viewport and uh, being able to hide it as well. Okay, we also have double-sided, so we can make that double-sided so we can get a little bit more diffuse light, um, which is great. And this is just working with an area light, and what I'm doing is bouncing a light up into um, a, uh, a 3D model asset that I have. Right, this is what's giving me the nice soft shadows and the, and the nice soft lighting that's looking a little bit more natural. And I go through that in a lot of my video tutorials with Car Studio Kit. Uh, and then there's just variations of uh, light setups and different types of uh, uh, presets that I use within that kit. So here um, we also have directional, which is great. I love this feature uh, because you can direct your light. You can you can direct it and kind of sh uh, more or less do like the barn door look and, and kind of close off light and direct it more. But uh, obviously because the, the light is sitting upwards and it's facing the ceiling, uh, we're not gonna see that effect too much here, but it's okay even if, you know, add a little bit, it's okay. We can just keep that as is. And, um, and that's it. So like if I come up here and I group these guys together, if I cl close this group, now I can move the whole entire fabric in here, and then if I just kind of adjust the lights, I can get a different look. But also now, because I got this guy, I just want to hide the, uh, the lights, so I did that. Let's come back up. It's your final render area light. It'll be a double sided, and we'll just take it off visibility, and there we go, it's out of the shot. And you can see now the nice and cool little results here. Okay, let's just warm this up a bit. Okay, so now if we want, we can always change to our camera. Um, let's just go to our camera here. Actually, whoops. Let's just bring this up. Get a couple of cameras. This is my camera. And just go to a show save frame. And let's just try to get another angle. Let's make this angle a little more interesting. Okay, I'm not really happy with the lights there, so I'm going to come back to the top. Let's select, select our fabric light. Close the group. I'm just going to go to orthographic mode here and try to open it up here, like so. Grab this light. Okay, let's just drag that over here, like so. Let's try to get more of an angle here. And let's just bring this guy down. Let's get more dramatic. All right, so as you can see, I'm just adjusting my light. I'm getting results quite fast. And uh, let's just see what else we can do with this thing here. Let's uh, just kind of tighten up the length of this. And then also we can now add our intensity. We can go back to eight. Go three, let's see, I'm just gonna try to Find a nice. I don't want to overlight the uh, the panel here. Okay, off the side of where the uh, 
the hood is going here. Okay, so I'm just watching out for that. So I want to, I can additionally add another light in the back here, but maybe the, the whole thing is, and we just want to have a dramatic, kind of more of a, a very cinematic look to this one, let's just say. So as you can see, adjusting uh, lights are, are, are quite uh, simple, and the response time that you see here uh, in the active shade is working quite nice. If I want to let's see, let's try some of the other techniques here, let's bring in this light. Let's add two light panels up. I can shift and drag and copy, and we're starting to. Let's just try to move this guy up a bit. So also what we're going to try to do here at this point is because we see a light kind of bouncing in towards the, uh, the background here and you can see that it's just not uneven, I'm going to try to exclude um, this light. Uh, I'm going to exclude the, sorry, the, the background for the light so that the light's not hitting in the background. So we can, we can use that property here where um, so if I come down into exclude and click this, you can actually see where... I believe if I can remember this, so we have a ton of different uh, so naming is very important. And I believe this is zero zero one, but I'm sort of just looking at this. I'm just gonna grab this guy. So let's put it in. Okay. So you know, just name this. Okay. Important. Very important. Um, and then when we come up here, check back and hit exclude. Come in, use background. I believe you won't see it here. So let's close that off. Let's try to render it again and see if that is functioning now. Let's see, hopefully I don't render the uh, orthographic here. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. Should be... Uh... Okay, so the exclude uh, is not still functioning yet. Uh, or maybe here, I don't know if... if uh, so what we'll have to do is just be a little more natural with this. So let's just kind of move this up. Let's just try to rotate this a bit. There we go. So we evened it out. Okay. So there's always workarounds. Um, but as you can see, we just, I just want to get a little light on here. That's all. Nothing, nothing too big. But as you can see, just moving lights around in the scene. Uh, this is obviously a very uh, simple studio setup. But then with uh, doing some post work and doing some uh, lens effects will really help this image pop and uh, stand out. But this is a great way to get started to uh, having something really cool uh, and realistic. Um, so yeah, guys, I think uh, that concludes this video, and uh, I believe that uh, we'll uh, have more in the future. But for now, I hope I guys I showed you guys a uh, an example of what you can do with Final Render for GPU Hybrid Render Engine. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again.